Hi, welcome to this video on basics of the Global Positioning System, or GPS. In this video, we're going to try to do three things. We're going to talk a little bit about how the location of your handheld GPS receiver is determined. Then we're going to talk about why that position is probably wrong and what the sources of uncertainty are. And then we'll finish briefly by looking at best practices for using a handheld GPS in the field. So GPS relies on a satellite network that are usually maintained by governments, including of course the US government, which maintains the NAVSTAR network. And this has 32 satellites currently in orbit. Some of those are backups in case one breaks down. They have a 55 degree orbit and a roughly 12 hour repeat time. So at any given time on Earth, you probably have roughly uh, nine NAVSTAR satellites visible in the sky at any time. Now Europe maintains a network, Russia maintains a network, and uh, a lot of sophisticated GPSs can also use those networks in addition to NAVSTAR. So the first step in knowing where you are on the ground is actually knowing where the satellite is in space. And this is what makes GPS totally unique. It tells you your exact position on the ground based on relative to the positions of the satellites in orbit. We won't get into that, uh, but basically uh, the satellite position is known precisely from orbital models, and those models are calibrated by communication with ground stations. So a couple of them here on some islands in the ocean and then everything's run out of this master control station um, run by the Air Force in Colorado Springs. Now satellites communicate by broadcasting a radio signal, so that's electromagnetic radiation, um, and it's broadcast into a full hemisphere uh, down towards Earth. So if we can use that broadcast radio signal to determine the range or the distance between the receiver and the satellite, we can ultimately use that range to find our position on the surface of Earth. So here's how that might work in practice. There's some, if you're standing at a unique location on Earth, you might be measuring a signal from four, five, six, seven different satellites. And the range to any one of those satellites can basically be viewed as the radius of a sphere. So in other words, if you know that you're 5,000 kilometers from this satellite, that puts your location somewhere on a sphere of radius 5,000 kilometers. But it doesn't, if you only have one satellite, that doesn't uniquely locate you. You actually need f the range from four different satellites, each defining their own possible sphere. And it's the intersection of those spheres that uniquely defines your location on Earth. And of course, to get a very precise location, you want at least six or seven, sometimes many more satellites to narrow down the precision and accuracy of your location. So the range between your receiver and the satellite is determined by the travel time of the signal. So quite simply, the radio wave is moving at the speed of light. So the distance that it traveled, or the range, is given by the travel time times its speed. So how is that travel time actually established? Basically, the way this works is that the satellite and your handheld receiver are both generating a CA code. It's basically a binary code. Um, that looks something like this, kind of like a barcode. And they're generating these signals, or this code, uh, at the exact same time. Now, if your handheld GPS generates the code at this time, and then it receives a code from the satellite, the offset in that code right here, the amount of time that the, the codes are offset, um, is a function of how long it took that radio wave to travel from the satellite to the handheld receiver. So by comparing the, the received code versus the internal code, looking at the time offset between them, you can estimate the travel time of that radio wave 
between the satellite and the receiver. Okay, but there's a lot of sources of uncertainty associated with that travel time and with the subsequent range determination. So let's look at these three main sources of uncertainty that contribute to error in your GPS location. One source of uncertainty is simply that the, the location of the satellite may not be perfectly known. So what that means is that your range might be computed correctly to the satellite, but when you actually try to triangulate your position, it's actually wrong. Um, another common source of uncertainty is ionospheric and atmospheric interference. These radio waves have to travel through the ionosphere to get to Earth. And what can happen is that charged particles like electrons in the ionosphere can actually uh, influence and deflect the radio wave as it comes through the ionosphere and actually typically make its travel time a little bit longer, which would mean that your GPS then would estimate a range that was a little bit too long. Um, so as conditions in the ionosphere and the atmosphere change, the, the range between your satellite and the receiver can also change, and that may input some error into your location. Another very common source of error is called multipathing. Basically, if your GPS receiver is surrounded by tall objects like buildings or trees, it may be that a radio wave can actually come from the satellite bounce off a building before it gets to your satellite. So if that's the case, uh, that radio wave has actually taken a longer path to get to your, sat to your receiver than you had expected. So again, you'd compute a range that was too long, which would cause you to misestimate your location. And that's called multipathing. So one way to beat down some of these uncertainties is to use what's called differential GPS. And this basically, in particular, is very good at accounting for errors induced by the ionospheric delay. And the way this works is that you basically have a base station sitting at a known location and collecting GPS continuously. So this station is always computing its apparent GPS position. It knows where it is, and then it just computes where it, it thinks it is based on GPS. From that, an offset or a difference can be computed. Basically, uh, the position given by the GPS at that station minus its actual known position. That's called a differential, and that offset is primarily due to changing conditions in the ionosphere, so changing delays in the radio waves. And that changes as a function of time, of course. So the differential today might be quite different from the differential tomorrow. Now what that base station can do is it can broadcast that actual differential number out to a handheld receiver that you might be using and your receiver can then apply that correction. It can basically say, look, the, the fixed station is off by one meter today. I think we are also off by one meter. I'm gonna apply that correction and improve the accuracy of my GPS location. So again, this system works because the same uncertainties are affecting both the roving GPS and the base station and namely those uncertainties are ionospheric and atmospheric delays. So that's how differential GPS works. Now a great example of differential GPS is the wide angle augmentation signal or the WAS. What this is is it's a network of ground stations that do exactly what I just described and then they rebroadcast the differential offset uh, through a geostationary satellite and your handheld receiver, if it's equipped to, to measure the WAS signal, can improve its accuracy up to about one meter horizontal or one and a half meter vertical. Now the key thing is this, 
because it relies on a network of base stations that have to be maintained by a government, um, this WAS doesn't exist everywhere. This is something that's maintained above North America by the relevant governments. Um, so the coverage for the WAS signal pretty much only covers uh, North America, most of Canada, all of the United States, and much of Mexico. And of course, Europe and other countries have similar networks that go by different names. But basically, if you're using a handheld GPS in the United States, you're going to be getting much better accuracy than you would be if you were using it, say, in Argentina because of this WAS signal. All right, so let's finish now with uh, best practices for using a handheld GPS. You're out there in the field and you're trying to do things right so that you can get the most accurate location you want. Here's a few ideas. One, get a GPS that has WAS enabled. Make sure when you're using that GPS, it has a clear view of the horizon and can see at least four satellites, okay? Stand clear of objects that could give you a multipath. So watch out for buildings and trees, anything that could give you a multipath. And when you're moving, hold that GPS flat out in front of you as you move. Make sure you're not multipathing off your own body. Or if I'm really on the move, I'll often leave the GPS in the top pocket of my backpack where it has a pretty clear view of the sky. When you're collecting a waypoint, think about setting the GPS down somewhere away from multipathing and holding it in a fixed location for at least 15 seconds. Let it catch its breath and acquire its location pretty precisely before you lock in that waypoint. All right, so here's a few concept questions. You could check your understanding of this material, and we'll see you out in the field with your handheld GPS.